When you picture the life of an 18 year old, you probably think about high school, hanging out with friends, working on the site and maybe getting your driver's license. Quite frankly, this is not the life of the 18 year old we are going to be talking about today. Because the teenager we are going to be talking about today was signed to the biggest fighting league in the world at just 17 years old, the UFC. But who am I even talking about? Most of you guys have probably heard of him when he got signed. I'm going to talk about Raul Rosas Jr. and how he became a fighter in the most competitive fighting organization in the world. Raul was born and raised in New Mexico. His father was always a big martial arts fan, who knew a bit of boxing and even boxed himself. After seeing his dad box at 5 years old, Raul decided that he wanted to become a fighter when he grows up. Raul already has been training BJJ and Karate since the age of 4 with his siblings. His dad would also give them boxing lessons. At 13 years old, Raul's family would move to the US where Raul kept training. At only 15, Raul had his first amateur fight at Beer River FC, which he would end up winning by a rear naked choke in the first round. He had his second amateur fight with 16 at UVC Mexico, where he would finish his opponent by armbar in the first round. After winning both of his amateur fights, Raul decided that he was ready to start his professional MMA career. Raul will keep fighting in the UVC. At UVC 30, Raul and his opponent would both make their pro MMA debuts. At the bell, Raul immediately rushes to the center of the octagon, hunting his opponent down like it is his prey. Eduardo fakes a right and tries to go high with his lead leg, but Raul immediately catches his leg and turns it into a single leg takedown. Eduardo is trying to save himself by holding Raul inside of a guillotine, while posturing up. After almost successfully standing up, Raul sits him back down immediately. Eduardo is still holding tight onto his head, but that right there is a big mistake, because now Raul is able to bring his hands together to body lock him and to transition to his back at the same time. After locking up a body triangle, Raul starts looking for the choke immediately, and after finding it, Raul submits his opponent with a rear naked choke after only 48 seconds. Five months later, Raul would finish his second fight at UVC 32 in similar fashion. Once again, rushing into the center of the octagon, irritating his opponent with a leg kick, a couple of punches and a flying knee before taking him down with a double leg. Raul is securing top control while punishing Peña with ground and pound. Now his opponent Peña is making the same mistake as Raul's former opponent. By trying to hold on to Raul's head, he is able to almost completely take his back. Peña is able to stand up, but Raul is making him carry all of his weight. And after Peña gets on his knees again, Raul's jiu-jitsu instincts immediately hit him and he proceeds to finish his opponent via armbar. Only one month later, Raul fought again at UVC 33. He starts by taking center control and feigning his right. In typical fashion, he then shoots a double leg takedown and transitions to side control. After his opponent tries to stand up, he transitions to the back. And after taking the back, Raul is like an anaconda, waiting to squeeze the life out of his opponent. After not being able to finish the choke, Raul quickly takes his arm and finishes his third fight with an armbar. One month later, Raul would face José Penalosa at UVC 34. By now, we kind of know Raul's style. He rushes in, feints and takes his opponents down. Now usually, after taking his opponents down and scrambling with them, Raul was always able to finish them. But this time his opponent, Penalosa, showed good ground defense. Raul was the offensive fighter with more dominant position. He pressured his opponent and didn't give him any time to breathe. Penalosa would be the first fighter to go to the second round with Raul. In the second round, Raul did not seem to slow down. Again, immediately going for the takedown against his opponent. He secures mount position where he then lands some punches on him. Penalosa is trying to use the cage as leverage to get him off, but he's not able to. After hip escaping, Penalosa is trying to triangle Raul, but Raul escapes and punishes his opponent with punches. After another failed submission attempt, Penalosa goes into the turtle, where Raul takes his back again. After some ground and pound and flattening his opponent out, Raul is able to finish the fight by rear naked choke. Raul did not want to end his monthly win streak, so a month later Raul would face Andres Porto Carano. Raul once again starts the fight with a double leg takedown. This time he was not looking for a submission though. Raul would get on top of his opponent and just feed him with vicious ground and pound. Raul did not even proceed to punch but instead elbowed his opponent. And after beating on his opponent enough, the referee decided that it was over. Raul won his fifth pro MMA fight with a finish at 17 years old. The UVC is not known to most of us, but it is a locally known Mexican fighting promotion which was also featured on the UFC Fight Pass. Because of that, Dana White's team quickly spotted the talented Raul Rosas and made him an offer to appear on Dana White's Contender Series. Dana White's Contender Series is a TV show on which the primary goal is to scout new talent that then could be signed to the UFC. Jamal Hill, the current light heavyweight champion, and Sean O'Malley were previous contenders on the TV show. 
Russus knew that this was a big opportunity that he had to take advantage of. His first contender series fight was against Mando Gutierrez. This fight went to a decision and was not very eventful, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown of everything that happened. Raul used his pressure fighting style again, where he controlled the center of the octagon and shot for a takedown. Both fighters had close submission attempts, but except for a little ground and pound here and there, there wasn't a lot going on besides grappling. The second and the third round went on in a similar fashion. His opponent's biggest mistake was trying to out grapple Raul even though he had moments in which he could have changed the direction of the fight. The fight went to a unanimous decision for Raul. Because he was the more offensive fighter, constantly threatening submissions out of more dominant positions. After winning the fight, Raul would walk past Dana White and make a move that maybe was the key to his UFC contract. Because he told this to Dana White while walking past him. Dana White was impressed with the performance of the young Mexican. Raul would sign his first UFC contract at the age of 17, which makes him the youngest fighter to ever compete in the UFC. Shortly after signing the contract, Raul turned 18 and would face his first opponent in the UFC. He would face Jay Perrin, a fighter with an 0-2 record on the 10th December of 2022. One year and three months after his first fight, Raul had already made it into the most competitive fighting league in the world. Raul wanted to take the center of the octagon in his usual fashion. But Jay, who probably watched some of his fights, made sure not to get pressure too close to the cage. After some punches are thrown, Raul is able to close the distance enough to shoot for a single leg. Jay is defending the takedown by using the cage, but then Raul just picks him up like a kid. After being slammed down, Jay quickly stands up, but the young Mexican is determined to take his back. And after ragdolling him again, he jumps to his back and puts both hooks in. After being carried like a human backpack for a while, Raul is able to get the choke and finish his first UFC opponent in the first round by rear naked choke. <laughs> No. After breaking down his fights, everyone should understand why this young prodigy was signed to the UFC. No, let's talk about his possible future. Can someone that young handle the tough world of MMA? And how is he going to handle all this newfound fame? There are many examples of Hollywood celebrities who got famous at a young age and turned out horribly. This has many different reasons. Some got abused while working, some had to work even if they did not want to, but for most of them it was being in the public eye while being young. A lot of people romanticize the idea of being rich and famous, thinking only of the bright side. The money, the things that they can buy, the status. But there is also a dark side which is not often discussed. When you are famous, every step that you make is being monitored by the media. You are going to have fans, but at the same time there will be people who are praying for your downfall without even knowing you. And not many people can deal with that pressure. Just look at examples like Britney Spears, Macaulay Corkin and many more. But let's look at young prospects in the fighting world. Another fighter who was signed to the UFC at a very young age was Sage Northcutt. He was also discovered on an older version of the Dana White Contender Series. Everyone was saying that he was going to be the next champion and everyone was hyping up the next MMA prodigy. Especially after his UFC debut, where he would finish his opponent by TKO in the first 57 seconds of the fight. But after 8 fights he was released from the UFC. He then went on to fight Cosmo Alexander at one championship, who knocked him out viciously and broke 8 bones in his face. Sage will be fighting soon again. He did not turn out bad or messed up, like the child celebrities I mentioned, but he also did not reach the potential that everyone thought he had. But Sage is a rather timid example if we look at the case of Victoria Lee. Only 16 days after Raul Rosa's debut on the 26th December of 2022, Victoria Lee, a 18 year old pro MMA fighter from one championship, was found dead. Her cause of death was not revealed, but some people speculate that she might have taken her life because she could not handle the stress of being a pro MMA fighter. Out of respect for her family, I'm not going into further speculations. Someone that is also worth mentioning is John Jones. On the one hand, many people consider him to be the best fighter to ever step into an octagon. On the other hand, a lot of people consider him to be scum because of his previous criminal history and actions. Jones was signed to the UFC at the age of 21 and holds the record as the youngest champion ever by claiming the undisputed title at the age of 23. Jones is a good example of what happens when a young ego gets fed with stardom and money. But John Jones is currently the heavyweight champion of the UFC, so even though he had a rough path, he still remained one of the best ever. But how will Raul's future look? 
Of course, you can only speculate, but in interviews, Raul seems like he's focused on his goal of beating John Jones for the record of the youngest UFC champion ever. The most important thing that Raul currently can do is stay humble. Because even though he's being hyped up right now and might have many fans, we all know how fast the MMA community tends to switch up on a fighter and forget him. If Raul really wants to become a champion, he needs to improve. He has reached the top of the hill, but waiting there is just another mountain that needs to be climbed and this needs to be his mindset right now. Also, he should do the typical boxer method for his next 3 or 4 fights until he has gathered enough experience against the top guys. I think if he keeps improving then we all might see someone beat John John's record as youngest title holder pretty soon. Raul is fighting again this Saturday and it will be his first fight on a main card. The main event will be Israel Adesanya against Alex Pereira. If you want to know more about Alex Pereira, feel free to click on the screen and watch my last video about him. Making these types of videos takes a long time. And if you sticked around for this long, I guess you liked it. So if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Thank you. Peace out.